What's Gucci, everyone? I'm glad to see everyone again, or I'm glad to say hi again, if you can see me and I can see you. Hopefully you can see me. And today, I want to make a video on the new features in Rails 4.2. And in particular, actually the only feature we're going to cover in this video is the active job part of the new version of Rails 4.2. So, in Rails, there are, there are um, components of Rails. There's Active Mailer, which helps you in sending emails. There's Active Model, which facilitates um, a Ruby class with a database with a database place. So you can pull, you know, you can pull a model object parts from the database easily, like you're interacting with a Ruby object. So the model, you know, creates the interface between the, the database and your class, so you can easily act like it's a normal Ruby object. And so in Rails 4.2, they added another component called Active Job. And what Active Job allows you to do is it allows you to look at this new cool feature I learned I could do in my terminal. Active Job allows you to put one tasks in the background. So imagine that after you sign up on your Rails website, you automatically get an email. You know, you get an email saying, congratulations, you signed up for my site. And now it's part of your it's part of your Rails application to send that email now instead of you you know you sending that email the guy signs up and now he has to wait for that email to be sent before it can then redirect you to maybe the next link or the landing page of where you want your user to go next but instead you can say okay i'm going to send tell the background process of my Rails application to send that email later when it gets free time in the background so then i can worry about just loading my page and not wasting my user's time which we all want to do, and we want them to have a better experience on our site. So that's what we're going to do here. And I'm going to take you guys from the beginning to the end. It's going to be pretty simple. So I'm going to start with the new Rails project. I'm going to do Rails new, and I'm going to do, let's do um, new version 4.2. 4.2, and I'll, I'll do a gist, I guess, of what I did. So new, do two, and then we'll do a capital T for no testing, because I, I don't like the automatic testing you automatically get, but if you have it, that's okay, because we're not going to even be doing any testing in this video. So now bundle okay, installed, so now I'm inside my Rails project. The first thing I'm going to do is also we're going to create another active job, which I forgot to do. So now that we've created everything and we're going to, I'm going to CD into my new version, I can now create a new job and simply there's a generator for active job because now it's purposely integrated into rails before you had to add a gem like sidekick to do this but now you can do this without caring about now you can do this without doing anything now we're going to add a job to our rails project the way we can do this is by simply generating it because now background jobs are a rails component before you had to use a gem like sidekick So I'm going to do Rails G first job, because that's what we're going to do. Rails G job first job. So you tell it you want to generate a job. Now once you've created a job, we can go into our project and look at the first job. It's going to be located in your app folder inside. Now you have another folder, if you've noticed that you've done Rails 4, you have another folder called jobs. And as you can see, you have first job job. And that's because I probably named it wrong and I was just supposed to name it first. And so now I have first job job. And so simply it has this perform action. And this is something, this is anything you want to be for, performed when Rails has some free time or the background has free time to be able to do something, send an email or do whatever. So I'm going to do puts hello. We're just going to do something very simple. But usually you'd probably want it to send an email or you'd want it to, you know, maybe config, um, compress an image they uploaded or do something that would be very helpful and time consuming in the background. So your user doesn't see that loading time. Okay. So now I'm going to so I'm going to put perform hello here. And so now we're going to test this out. So now I'm going to do Rails G and we're going to do what we're going to create a scaffold. And so with this scaffold, it's simply a scaffold if you don't want it. We'll make it called book and it's just we're going to be we're going to do this. So title that's going to be integer this doesn't really matter, but I'm just trying to make it a little bit interesting. So content will be text because that's going to be long. And so I'm creating a book scaffold, which will give me all the options I want. So now that I've created that, I'm going to upload the book 
controller here. And so now I have all these actions. And so simply to call a job, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to call the class. I'm going to say first job, first job, job. And then I'm going to say, you know, I'm going to tell it to deliver whenever it can. Now I'm going to call a job on the first job, job. It's kind of funny. First job, job. Say that three times fast. The way to do this is to simply call perform later. And I'll have a description to the documentation below. I definitely suggest reading that for all the methods. I'm not going to cover all of them. And then simply, if you wanted to pass in more methods to the background job, you could through the index. As you notice, it has an asterisk under args. That means it takes an infinite number of arguments for you and it compresses and it puts them all in an array format for you to access. If you don't know that, that's basic Ruby. But you can just put, you know, program, you just can send it, you know, one, comma, two, comma, three. I can send it whatever I want here. But it's going to print, it's just going to put hello, so I don't really need to do much. So that's pretty good here. Another thing I forgot to do is that when I create the scaffold, you got to run write db migrate, which I'll run right now. And another thing we're going to do is we need to change our routes folder. So we're going to change our routes folder so that whenever you go to the root, it takes you to the books index action. And the way I do that is with the title of my controller books and then hashtag and then the command I want. So it says right here. So I'd want index. So that's going to take me to the index here, right? And so now that I've run rate B to my grad for my new uh, migration that I created with my books, I'm going to run Rails S. And so now here in my other terminal, I'm going to go, I'm now going to go to localhost 3000. And so let me let me show let me show you guys kind of a side by side thing. So now I'm going to I'm going to refresh the page here. And so when I refreshed it and I go look at everything that happened, I can see a few things. I can see my active job getting run. Active job on queued first job job to inline default with the argument. So what the arguments it was given and then what happened. So I said puts hello. So it put it printed out hello inside my inside, you know, kind of the standard out. So then it, it shows me that it performed the job and that it's done in 0.05 milliseconds because I was just trying to tell it to do that. So that is pretty awesome. Now, the whole point of jobs is that you can also tell the job, the jobs are put in a queue. So, you know, if, if one job, get, if one job is placed before the other, that is the job that gets executed first. So other things you can tell the job to do is you can tell that exact you can tell it exactly when to execute. So I can set it to a time when I want it to execute. So I can say wait one dot week and then it will wait a week as long as I keep the server up, but I'm not going to. And that's why I love Ruby. Look, you can just set it to wait one week and then it will wait in the queue for a week and then if it if it's free, it will execute one week from now. So maybe if you only want to send them annoying emails once a week, or a week after they sign up, not immediately, so you don't annoy them, or to maybe to remind them afterwards, you can do that. What a good idea. You can also, yeah, that's that's about it. You could then set that anything. You could set that to one day or anything you wanted to. You could set it to one day or one hour. So it's pretty awesome. That's the data object of Ruby, and that's jobs in Ruby. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I will include the documentation in the link below, and I'll post a gist of everything that's going on here in the link below. Also, if you noticed, I'm just calling first job job. So I'm calling the name of this class. I'm not calling this perform method. Um, the, the active job base that it inherits from automatically knows to call the perform method once I call perform later on the first on the class name. So you just have to call the class name dot perform later and it does everything for you and pass in all the parameters that you want. Well guys, I hope you had a gr have the best day of your lives and um, leave a comment. I always love it when you guys leave comments, especially encouraging ones. Spread the love. Bye.